let's, let's begin by reminding ourselves that this is all happened before. 80 years ago, people were debating these issues with just as much passion. The solution 80 years ago was for politicians, rather than businessmen and civil servants, to take the wires attached to the leaders that those people control and attach them to the leaders that the politicians control. In other words, politics was put ahead of economics. Since the mid-80s, that process has been reversed. Now, most of the wires are attached to the leaders that business control and that civil service control. What I'm asking you is, do you think that the time has come to do what happened 80 years ago and to let politics take the lead over the lives. Who wants to feel that one? <laughs> well, Chris, obviously the answer is yes. Um, you know, we, we seem to be in a bind here where even when the rest of the world and the OECD is actively talking about interventions to support manufacturing, describes the importance of it. They're debating uh, financial transaction taxes. You've got quantitative easing in any number of countries. You know, the whole situation has changed. We've got a government that wants to hang on to a neoliberal prescription and does not want to budge. And so, you know, the most painful part of that, I think, was to give massive tax cuts to those on high incomes when we were going into a really deep global financial crisis and then wondering why we've got widening inequality in New Zealand, you know, growing inequality. So from my perspective, there has to be a political response. What we're doing today, I think, is trying to build a constituency across the union movement and manufacturers about what the demands might be. And in what I presented, I tried to go across three areas. Some big levers that will be politically difficult and will be debatable, like capital gains and other things like that, uh, amending the Reserve Bank Act. At a secondary level, what about an industry policy that actually makes a genuine difference and has got things like procurement and other things like that at the heart of it? And thirdly, a leave no stone unturned approach when manufacturing jobs and jobs are threatened about what can be done. Now all of those require politicians to put, uh, to, to, to take a political economy approach rather than an approach that says whatever the market dishes up, be it massively high unemployment or whatever, we can't do anything. That's not what the rest of the world is looking at. They're looking, whether it's about the global financial crisis or whatever, they're looking for good or bad about what the political response has to be. I think everyone has to <laughs> Okay, I, my hearing is a little impaired. I think you said 80 years and not 18 years. Um, so 80 years ago, I, I think you uh, draw attention to a really critical era that was the kind of end of the original era of liberalism in the 1920s, um, the results were probably predictable and rather similar to what's happened. And it's rather frightening what happened in the, in the wake of the Wall Street crash. So we had better be concerned politically as well as economically about responses because some of the things that happened in the 1930s were very ugly. And some of the things that are happening in, in European politics now are also rather worrying. So yes we have to be concerned about politics as well as the economy. From where I sit, I thought the issue was politics. Uh, th there's, there's really very little the individual company can do in the face of what's going on. Governments have handed away monetary policy to independent reserve banks, and then around the world that independence has reacted to protect the various jurisdictions that the reserve banks are in. Ours has sort of uh, stuck with the faith and hoped it would all go away. Uh, I don't want to be unduly pessimistic, but we're going to see, I think, 
over the next 12 months further tightening around the world, we're going to see the sort of, you know, I do hear the odd commentator talking about the GFC in the past tense. No, we're still living through it and it's going to get worse. Um, how bad? Is it going to be like the late 20s, 30s? Is it really going to, to stimulate some, some real change? Well, for me, the change is happening elsewhere. It's our politicians who seem to think right now that they don't need to change. So I, I see the holdup. Actually, the holdup's not in the economics. You heard Salwin earlier, OECD, IMF, are all talking heresy from five years ago. And some of the politicians around the world are getting on board. We're certainly not doing it here. Right now, we've got into the denial phase. How long the denial phase will, st will stick around depends on how much pressure builds, I guess.